Hello Shane and Sophie. I know you were devastated, Shane, that Dad died when you weren't here. That's the way things go. So I thought maybe you would like to have known what went on at the Mass and hear the eulogy that I wrote for a wonderful man. I'm going to read it for you as I read it yesterday and hope in doing so it'll help you feel your part in his life. Okay, here goes. Good morning, our friends and family. Kieran has already welcomed you all today and I want to thank you all for your much appreciated support. Before I begin, we would be delighted off if afterwards you would join us in Newlands Golf Club where, as it is a Friday, there will be a plate and a glass for everyone in the audience. And so, to my amazing dad, John, where do I start? Don't worry, I know I have to keep it short, so I promise not to exceed the half hour so feel free to place your bets now. I jest. I'm going to add a little bit here because this morning, when I was trying to uh, put a face on, I was thinking, what would I think was Dad's best virtue? He had so many. And it came to me, for me, Dad's best virtue, virtue was his perception. And in saying that, his perception just was spot on. It wasn't in what Dad said. It was that Dad always knew when not to say anything. Like the song says, I love you best when you say nothing at all. That virtue, I realise, he passed to me and also to my son Donal. And I think it's one of the best gifts he could have passed to me. Kieran has already outlined important parts of Dad's life, so I will perhaps just fill in a few gaps. My brother Donald and I were truly blessed that we were put in to the right queue when it came to choosing our parents, John and Mary. We were brought up in a home which was filled with nothing but love, harmony, trust, respect, and lots of fun. This gave us both the fundamental belief that that is what everybody's life was like, eternal happiness. We were always protected, cherished and adored by both our fabulous parents. They passed on that legacy and now our home mirrors the home that I had the privilege to grow up in. Mum and Dad have been living together under many different roofs for 60 short years and have been married for over 56 of those years. But that, believe me, is not actually what it sounds. At 25 years of age, Dad's flourishing career brought him to the lovely Rath Downey in the county of Leash. And it was there that a true, true love was founded. My granny, a young widow, had a pub and a highly respected boarding house. And it appears a matchmaking service for her two daughters. And so, under the watchful eye of Pauline Quigley, mum and dad began their happiness together and each roof had the same common denominator, love 
laughter, respect and communication. I can honestly say there was never a crossword in our home and a kiss was always had when one was leaving or returning each day. Another legacy passed to us Keenans. Shockingly, in March 1987, the bubble burst when our family was shattered by the untimely death of our youngest member, my brother Domo. Our hearts were all broken, but especially Dad's. As for the first time in his life, he could not protect us from the heartbreak and suffering. It was something way beyond his control. However, rather than blowing us apart, the three of us became an even tighter unit and having stuck together through thick and thin to this day, Dad and Mom were the glue. The years that followed were the toughest we had experienced, but as time goes by, there is a certain amount of healing. When I met Kieran, my parents instantly loved him, although they knew him before I did. But that's a whole different story, and time is ticking. Dad looked upon Kieran as his son and loved him with all his heart. On the rare occasion that I was annoyed with Kieran, I was at nothing looking for sympathy from Dad. And all I got would get would be the standard, hmm, which he did when he didn't agree with or approve of what you were saying to him. But he didn't want to argue with you either. So the small hmm used told you in the nicest possible way that that conversation was over. The next light in Dad's life arrived in October 1987, 97, sorry, his grandson Donal, or as Dad always called him, my best boy. It became a thing between them and when cards were exchanged at Christmas or birthdays, this was the term they used, my best boy. And so he was. My God, Dad would bore the off you talking about him. And I'm his mother. So you can only imagine. So many times I would have to pull Dad up and say, Dad, nobody is interested in your grandchildren. Only yourself, Granny and his parents. Funnily enough, I would get that standard response. Hmm. Mom used to be mesmerised at the amount of time Dad and Donal could be seen with their heads locked together in intense conversation from a very young age. Donal always said, Grandad knows everything. As children do, Donal was an inquisitive child with the most profound questions. And when he would pose such a question to me, I would say, you know, I think that's really a granddad question, as I wasn't in school the day we covered that. Donal soon came to his own conclusion that I was actually never in school. Luckily for me, I had a dad passing on his wisdom, values and memories to my son. And Donal in turn brought that spark back to dad's life. I do not want to single out people to thank, but there's always one however. For many years, I'm imagining it started when Dad retired in 1997. There was a standing arrangement every Tuesday between Dad and his true, true friend, Shane McFadden. They met in Newlands around 1.30 and sat at the end of the bar and Dad's infectious laugh 
as always, could be heard all around. When Dad became ill, it did not stop their meetings. Shane collected Dad each and every Tuesday, either to go to the club or miles, or later the halfway house. When Dad could no longer go out, Tuesdays remained the same. Shane called. And yet again, when Dad went into Coon Ross, if it was Tuesday, Shane was there. Shane's devotion to my dad surpassed every meaning of the word friendship. And for that, we are ever grateful. Poor Shane was devastated to hear that dad has died, as at this time he's visiting his own family in America. Recently, a good friend of mine asked me, Geraldine, how are you? And I replied, Nula, it's like this. I feel I'm standing immobile in the middle of a road and I can see a bus coming. I don't know how fast that bus is traveling. So I don't know when it's going to hit. All I know is it's coming. Well, at 10 to 5 on Tuesday, February 6th, 2018, the bus did finally hit. Unfortunately, I wasn't there when Dad slipped away in the company of his adoring wife, Mary, his grandson, Donal, and his nephew, Danny. Amazingly, Donal and Danny were also Dad's only two godsons, and Danny, who throughout his life has always been a regular caller to Mum and Dad's home, and also to visit Dad in Coon Ross. And so it was that Dan was the most fitting person who could have been there in the absence of Kieran and I. And having had a few days to digest my absence, I realise that la Dad left me a parting gift. He continued, as he did in life, protecting me at all times. And I know he will continue to do so. Dad knew I would be coming home. I was on my way home and would be there soon. But he chose to go before I could be there to see him leave. As I suspect, he knew that was just beyond my strength. Whenever I was leaving Dad at any time, I always said, I love you, Dad. And he would say, love you too, Ger. This didn't change through his illness, right up to the last day that I left him. On Tuesday morning, when I spoke to the nurse on the phone from Gran Canaria, she said, Oh, Geraldine, I just mentioned your name to John. And his reply, his reply to her was, Geraldine is my angel. And now, Dad, you are my angel. I love you, Dad. I love you too, Ger.